In this video, we are going to be doing a test of this Onsingi Daruma. A lot of folks, this is viewer request, as I have tested other gyros, have said, I've got to test this one. They really like it. They really like how it drives. So I'm going to give you a full setup, how I install it in my drift car, and then give it a test run to see how does it perform. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy and this is Roadside RC. You'll tend to find me bashing and crawling and drifting or racing, plus doing product review videos and how to's. And today we're testing this brand new gyro to see how does it perform. All right, so we have the gyro itself, which I always love on Sinky stuff, the patterns that they have on there. That's really, really nice three wires coming off of it one for the servo one for channel one one for the gyro control on channel three and then we do have our instructions here so we're going to go through this and get this installed but the first step is to get it mounted to the chassis so we're just going to use some double-sided tape and stick it to a non-vibrating solid surface on the chassis I'm going to slide it in right here on the bottom of the chassis. Nice solid location, should be free from vibrations. Then with these three plugs, it's rather simple, honestly. This big plug right here goes to the servo itself. So I'll plug that in here to my servo wire. The three wire plug. I mean, the three wire plug goes to the channel one for steering and the single wire goes to the third channel for gyro control. Now I have my controller plugged in and what we should see as we power this on for the first time is it gives us a blue and a red light. So the red up here means that we should be working in the Z axis and this blue light means that we are getting the gain from the controller. So the First thing I'm gonna test is, is the gyro working in the direction that I want it to. So if I move the rear tire towards me, the steering should move towards me also. And I'm getting, oh, there it goes. Oh, you can see we're working in the wrong axis. So if I move the car this way, the gyro is not moving. But if I tilt, then the gyro works. That means we're working on the wrong axis. This gyro actually is a three axis gyro, but it can only work at one at a time. So this red solid light means it's working in the Z axis. If I take this and I press down on this switch, it says if I hold the switch down, eventually it'll blink. And then I should be able to single press it to get it to a different axis. So now this is green. Let's see if green works in this direction all right that's still not what I want so it looks like we're gonna be looking for blue so I'm gonna hold it down again until it blinks one more time blue might be out oh now we're working and we're working in the correct direction so when I move it the steering is counter steering the correct direction and if I go this way, nothing happens. And if I go this way, nothing happens. All right. So it should be blue, but actually I'm not seeing any color on there at all. The next setting is supposed to be endpoint setting. What it says is if you hold the switch down while turning the car on, I should get the lights flashing. If I turn the steering all the way one way, where I want that to be the end point. Hit the button again, I should get a flash. And then if I go the other direction, and then that should be the end point set. See, it did a red flash and came back to blue. So I should be at this point counter steering the correct direction and have the endpoint set. The last thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and on my channel three control, I currently have it set at negative 70. So one of the things I like to do is bring it all the way to zero and at zero, I should be able to confirm that the gyro doesn't work. No more gyro control. All right, and then if I go positive, Let's see what happens. Gyro works again. 
all right so it doesn't say anything in the control about um, negative or positive being different when it comes to the control and the gyro function so we shouldn't have any difference there and you should be able to drive it however you would like time to give this a test drive So I've driven this car a decent amount now. Very rock solid. I didn't get a lot of gyro wobble. This is actually a pretty dang good gyro. Reasonably priced, better than a lot of other choices out there. I think at the end of the day though, for total feel, uh, especially as I started off camera because I have a bunch of junk in the garage, but bigger sweepers, I still like the feel of some of the Futabas and the Rev D a little bit better but it's kind of nitpicky and the price difference is pretty big actually. So if you are looking for a budget gyro that is not, it's not the base model budgets. I've done a lot of just base model budget gyros that just really weren't very good. Uh, this is actually kind of a nice mid-level price point without going all the way to a Futaba or a Rev DE. So I'm actually, huh so viewer requested good on you thank you for calling this out but i can't just leave it right there right like testing this gyro in the garage is good but i really want to get it out on a bigger surface on a bigger track and see what it feels like so i'm going to head over to my buddy's carpet track and see if it on a bigger surface how it feels <laughs> back from the track testing this on Sinki Daruma Gyro. And I gotta be honest with you, it's good. It's, <laughs> I, I didn't expect that the on Sinki Gyro would be as good as it is. Um, it is probably just as good as the Yokomo DP302 V4, and it's like five, 10 plus dollars cheaper. Really looks good, it performs good really happy with this gyro overall. I still hesitate to put it all the way at the top. 
of the gyro count with the uh, like the likes of the RevD Revox or the Futaba GYD, either the 450, 470, or 550. I, I it's like just slightly below those for me. Um, there's just a little bit in how it drives, a little bit of the predictability. It's just ever so slightly off, but I'd be honest, like it's really good. And I, I do highly recommend it. If you are looking for a gyro and you're not wanting to really pay that $90 price for those real top of the line or more for like the GYD 550, you know, the Rev D and the Futaba GYD 470 are both kind of in that like $90 range. This is at that like 70 ish or so where it's actually, it's actually cheaper than the Yokomo DP 302. And yeah, I think, I think I'd get it instead of the Yokomo. I think I'd put it up there. So, man, this Onsinki Daruma, it's good. So if you ever have a, if you're ever concerned, it's very predictable, easy to drive. I didn't get any gyro wobble out of it, anything like that. Super easy to set up, you know, a no-brainer kind of setup. So really really pretty happy with it. If you follow the channel, you know I actually really enjoy testing gyros and different drift parts. So in my drift playlist over here, you'll actually be able to scroll through and find a bunch of different gyro tests that I've done over time. So you can look at different alternatives and options that you have when you're looking for gyros. So I will see you in that next video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.